Hey everyone and welcome to Space Engineers. Maybe you're like me and you had it on your wishlist for a while or you tried playing it for an hour and then gave up on it because it was just too hard to figure out. Believe me, I understand. This game has a steep learning curve and doesn't offer enough guidance in-game to help. But it would honestly be a shame to see you give up on this game because once you get past the initial challenges, there is an amazing world waiting for you to explore, build and survive in. In today's video, my goal is to help beginners and perhaps potential players by showing you the basics of the game and how to get started. So let's dive in and make those first few hours less frustrating and more fun. When starting a new game, you'll have three options, scenarios, workshop and game mode. Scenarios are pre-made worlds designed to teach you the basic mechanics or provide you a challenge. However, these scenarios can be pretty challenging for beginning players and will get you frustrated quickly. But if you want a quick introduction to the basics like how to equip and use tools, how to repair and so on, you could try the first jump scenario. At a certain point you will reach the moon and by then you should have learned the basics and you can pick up the rest from this tutorial. In the workshop tab you can find community created content such as custom scenarios, blueprints, mods or skins. Downloading and trying them out can enhance your gaming experience with for example more immersive storylines. The last tab is game mode and there you can choose between survival and creative modes. Creative mode allows you to build with unlimited resources while survival emphasizes on gathering resources and managing your energy and oxygen. On the left side you can find different starting positions and situations. But for this tutorial we're going to scroll all the way down and pick start system. Now we can rename our save so it will be easier to find back later when we would load in. We're going to leave this here set to survival. It is possible to add mods to your save, you simply have to download them from the workshop and then you will be able to add them to your save. The great thing about this is that the mods are only enabled per save, so you can easily play vanilla on one save and mod it on the other without having to disable them every time you switch. I would advise however if this is the first time you play the game to start the game vanilla, at least for a few hours, just to get the hang of this and learn how the game handles and behaves before you add any mods to it. That way it will be easier to troubleshoot when something bugs out and you can see if it's the game or the mod that is causing your bug. The next option is advanced, which allows you to change more specific settings to your game. But we won't be looking into this right now. You can always change the settings and enable mods later. Once you're happy with the setup of your new save, we can go ahead and press start in the bottom right. That will generate and load the world. Before we can start in the world, we will need to pick our starting position. As there are many different planets in this system, you will be able to pick different planets to start on, or you can simply start in space. Each of these choices will influence the difficulty of your playthrough, as some planets have lower oxygen or gravity, while others are cold or hot. For this playthrough, let us start on an Earth-like planet with our drop pod. The game should start up in a drop pod that just entered the atmosphere of a planet. By pressing V on your keyboard, you can switch to your third-person view and have a look around by pressing ALT and moving the mouse. We seem to be landing in a pretty good spot so there won't be any need for a respawn. In case you start in a location where it's too cold, hot or barren, you can always press F5 to choose to respawn in another location. Once the drop pod reaches the ground, it should eject its parachutes and give you a pretty smooth landing. Before we hop out of our seat, let us have a look at the HUD on screen. Currently there are three HUD panels which might differ slightly depending on your platform. On the left we have the player status screen. Here you can see the health, energy, oxygen and hydrogen and also four tabs on the top that show you your suit attachments, which are your helmet, jetpack, broadcasting and torch. On PC you will see the buttons you need to press to enable or disable them. Next to the bars you can see the gauge that will show you the speed you are traveling, both on feet and when in a vehicle. Next to that you can see the status of your dampeners. In short, these dampeners are what help you to control your jetpack or ship better. In other games it would be called flight assist or coupled mode. Especially on plants with gravity you want those dampeners enabled as when jetpacking or flying without them you will always be pulled back down to the planet which most likely will result in a crash. The middle panel is our toolbar. This will be the bar that differs most of all between platforms as console players will not have the hotkey function when using a controller. It is possible however to connect a keyboard and mouse to your Xbox and have the same options as seen on the screen. I'm unsure if PlayStation will have the same option. Now, if you're having a hard time following this guide with a controller, I would advise you to check out a tutorial by Keen concerning the controller buttons on their channel, which I will link in the description. 
You can also open up a window in-game to see all the buttons and combinations you can press on your controller. Simply press the menu button and press Y on your Xbox controller. I assume on PlayStation that button should be triangle. This should open up a help window and in the left column you should find the controller scheme and advanced controller menu. When selecting that you will be able to see all buttons and combinations. As I do not have Space Engineers on any of my consoles, I will have to focus on the PC layout. In the toolbar you will not only be able to add tools, but also building blocks or even quick controls when you are in a vehicle or a controller seat. Much of this will become clearer later during this tutorial. Above the toolbar you can see how full your inventory is. Once you get close to a full inventory, the bar will be filled up and turning red. On the right side you will find some more important information which are the artificial and planetary gravity, the orientation according to the surface of the planet and the quality of your oxygen and the temperature of the weather. Finally we have the HUD panel on the right which only will show up when you are in a vehicle. Once again you will see the tabs on top of that panel which will show you a few basic options to the vehicle. Parking brake, broadcast and power. On PC you can press P to release the parking brake. However until you figure out how this function works I would advise against using this button for now as it can cause to disconnect all your connected vehicles in a base. Below the tabs you can see how much your vehicle currently weighs. Take note that when your vehicle or ship is connected to a base, it will include that weight of what it's connected to it. Below the weight you can find the time remaining before the grid runs out of power if you continue doing what you're doing at the time. This means currently as I'm only hardly using any power apart from some lights, the battery will run out in two days. If I however would fly or drive, then the remaining time would adjust accordingly. Below you can see two bars, one showing you the percentage of power used and the other telling you how much hydrogen is in your tanks. Normally, I like to build my grids in such a way that I never use more than 50% when fully operational. We'll cover this in a later stage. As this drop pod does not have any hydrogen tanks or engines, the bar will show us empty. Alright, with the hut now covered, we can focus on getting some work done. Before we jump out of the chair, however, we should check the inventory. On PC, we can do this by pressing I. Inside the chair, you can find a pistol, some ammo and a data pack. You should not need any weapons for now on this basic playthrough, but if you wish, you can always move them to your inventory. The data pad should have GPS data for a nearby station, so let's move that to our inventory as well. To get out of your seat, you can press F on your keyboard. I believe on Xbox that should be X and on PlayStation that should be Square. Alright, now before we do anything else, let us inspect our drop pod first, as this will be our base of operations for at least the first hour. This is the O2 H2 generator. If I want to look into this, we can press I and now I can see I do have access to a little bit of inventory. And there you see we have ice, we have a hydrogen bottle and we have an oxygen bottle. What is more important is the hydrogen bottle. This is what's going to help you to recharge while you're flying away. I can take this and I can put it in my inventory. If I now go out again, you will see there's a little bottle on top of the H2. It's actually showing me now I have spare. So every time my hydrogen is going to go lower and it hits the 20 mark, it's going to recharge the hydrogen until, of course, the bottle is empty. Now, the bottle should have about 10 recharges, if I'm correct. In the back of the drop pot, we can find the survival kit. For the moment, you can see there's nothing in there. And we're going to be talking about how this works later on. Another thing I want to talk about is the connected inventories. Now, if I open up this button, it will show me all the inventories in this ship. You can see the survival kit, you can see the O2 generator, you can see my passenger seat and you can see the small cargo container as well. If I want to move ice between these containers, you can see that I can move it to my survival kit. I cannot move it to my passenger seat and the reason why I cannot put anything from there into my passenger seat is because there is no connection between this and the other storages. Now the connection allows me to move the ice to the survival kit, but the survival kit does not accept ice so it doesn't work. Now I can move the eyes into my personal inventory as it is connected through the conveyors. Now if you noticed I'm going to take the bottle and now you can see this is completely blanked out. I cannot move this bottle anywhere. I cannot move it to my inventory and that is because this piece is too big to travel through the conveyors that has been set up. You will see that there is like a pipe here running from here down to there. That is the connection that is going from my O2 generator to my survival kit. And that conveyor is too small to draw anything through it that is big. For example, a large bottle or for example, maybe a weapon that might not travel through that pipe. Uh, if you use ores, ice, 
things like that that will travel to the pipe but larger objects will have to be taken from the inventory itself or you have to use large conveyors and finally we have our battery we are currently at 75 percent you can see the indicator lights these four lights are showing you how much battery you have left and now it's saying you have more than 75 percent on this battery if you want to check the exact charge, you can go into your inventory, open your control panel and check for your battery. Here you can see that the battery currently has stored 979 kilowatts while it can store 1 megawatt. That means we are just a tad below our full capacity. So we have two days left before this battery is depleted, at least currently at the power we are using. There's some stuff on the top there that I want to talk about as well. But before we do that, let's talk about the jetpack. Uh, jetpack you can enable by pressing X on your keyboard. You see, I just enabled. I'm starting to float. If I do V, you can see that I'm actually floating. If I press space, I'm going to go up. If I place C, I'm going to go down. And this is how you can control your uh, horizontal thrust. To move vertically, you just press the buttons. The directional buttons, which are on the PC, are WASD, which you can control. And of course, then with the mouse, you can start looking around. So this is how you can use your jetpack. In the meantime, you can see I am starting to use a lot of hydrogen. I'm starting to use quite a lot of energy as well, but that's okay. This right here is the ore detector. As it states, it allows you to detect ores in the ground. So if you're looking for gold, cobalt or other uh, deposits, you can use the ore detector for this. Depending on the size, you can scan further. Now, the antenna can be used for several things. One of them is remote control. But I don't want to go too much into depth. Uh, this is something we can cover maybe in a later tutorial. All right, this is our drop pod. I think I covered most of it for the moment. What we're going to be focusing on right now is starting to collect resources as we will have to refine them. And for that, we will need the survival kit. The survival kit is kind of a combination between a refinery, an assembler and a med bay. All of them into one. Later in the game, we will be able to split these up and we will have all of them in different devices. But for the moment, the survival kit will do just fine. So the first thing we're going to do when we land on a planet is actually start collecting resources and putting them into the survival kit. For that, we need our tools. You should start off with three tools to begin with. I do have my drill. This is the one we're going to be using. Oh, look at that. We have some gold. This is actually pretty good. So just that you know, the drill has its own built-in ore detector. It will detect ores nearby. The distance is not that large. You will have to be pretty close, but you can find some ores by just holding the drill in your hand. Now, before we start drilling, I want to talk about the tools we have. We have three tools in total. We have the welder, which allows you to construct things. We have the grinder, which allows you to take things down. And of course, we have the drill, which allows you to start digging and mining. If I look at my drill, I have two options. I can either dig or I can mine. So if I want to dig, I can use the right mouse button. If I want to mine, I can use the left mouse button. Now, while this looks the same, they will have different effects on the terrain when you start digging. And I'll show you the difference. So if I dig, you will see the difference here. Let me just go down. I'm going to go on my... By the way, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to dig a hole right below so I can easily access my survival kit while I'm digging. So we're just going to dig down here. I'm going to go crouch so I'm closer to the ground. And I'm going to press the right mouse button and that is going to dig. All right, as you can see, I just started digging a hole and you can see there is no resources. I didn't get anything in my inventory, so we don't have anything. So this is digging. This takes a lot of terrain away. Mining is actually pressing the left mouse button. If I mine now, there we go. I just mined a little bit of stone here. I got 20.7 and 70.4. So if I would take that, this is what I just mined, 101 stone. And, and now I want to show you the difference between the terrain because this is just soil. As you can see the grass here, this is soil. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dig deeper until we reach the bedrock. Now, while I'm digging, I'm going to move my character forward. So I'm kind of making a nice slope, which is going to be easy for me to walk out again when I want to bring back the resources. Let's turn on the light so we can see what's happening. And you can see we're starting to hit bedrock here. I'm going to go a little bit deeper and there we go. All right. So you can see the difference between the terrain. You see, this is soil. This is dirt or earth. 
this is rock. And you will see, I got, if you look at my inventory, I got 101 stone from just digging a bit of that soil here. So let's do the same here. I'm going to do one mine. There we go. As you can see right now, look at this. 47, 6, 187, 93. So if I now take this by pressing F, I just got 334 stone out of this. So you can see definitely the efficiency is much better by mining rock than using dirt. So let me just mine some more stone until I have a full inventory. And you can see we picked this up. Now you can pick this up, as I said, by pressing F. If you mine, you can actually keep on pressing F while you're mining. And you can see it's actually automatically put it in my inventory. At least all the rocks that fall in front of my screen. All right, there we go. As you can see, my inventory is full. The red line next to my backpack is full. All right, let's go to our survival kits. Open up our survival kits with I. And you can see I have 2760 stone. I can move this over to my survival kit. So there's a few different ways to do that. You can either take it and just slide it over and it's going to automatically drop the stone into your inventory. The max it can hold, 1000 liters. Or you can also just double click. If I double click on it, it's going to move it over like that as well. The next one is by pressing a modifier. If I do control and I click with my mouse, it's going to move over 10. If I do shift plus mouse, it's going to move 100. And if I do control shift plus mouse click, it's going to move over 1000. So this is how you can move items over uh, in stacks. Now on PC, you can also slide uh, with the right mouse button. If I take the stone with the right mouse button and I slide it over to my survival kit, I will now be asked how much I want to shift. So if I say I want to shift over 1320 stone, it's going to move over the 1320 stone to my survival kit. So these are several ways you can move over your items in the inventory. So let's move the stone over. And as you can see now, I have a full survival kit. But there's nothing happening. The survival kit is not doing anything with this stone. And this is because you have to give it, it a command to actually start producing the ingots. So in the tab here, you can see production. You can open production and now you can see what you can actually craft. So there's a lot of tools you can craft. Uh, materials like computers, construction components, uh, displays, girders and so on. But it needs iron. As you can see, iron, silicon, uh, I think some nickel here. So for that, we will need to make the ingots first. And that is where this comes in handy. So this is what actually makes the ingots. So if I press Control Shift, I'm going to put thousands of these in production. So now my production is going to start making these resources out of my stone. If you look at my inventory, you can see my stone is starting to drop down. I can move this in here and you can see now it's starting to create these resources right here, like iron, nickel, silicon and gravel. And gravel is kind of a waste product, uh, especially in the beginning of the game. You don't really need it. Uh, you do need some gravel later to build reactors and some of the mods will use gravel like the paint mod or some mods also allow you to build in concrete which is also where you need gravel so gravel you don't need to keep you can throw it away later when you don't need it all right seems like my production is finished because i do not have enough stone so we're gonna have to do some more mining and we're just gonna mine and drop it into our survival kits Now, if you want to drop items in your survival kit, you can actually press the button Alt and middle mouse button, and that is going to drop all of that into the inventory of your survival kit. I am unsure what buttons you need to press on the Xbox. Now, you might have noticed here, if I look at my inventory, I'm not able to drop my stone in there constantly. So this goes really slow. I'm kind of limited to be able to keep on mining and dropping stuff in here. So what I would like to focus on is actually build a container against this. So it kind of allows me to drop more stone in one go and have the refinery do its thing while I'm mining. So if you look at the bottom bar there, you can see I have my tools. So if I press one, two and three, these are my tools. If I press four, 
This is actually a light armor block. We're going to be talking about that later. Then five and six are the assembly and the refinery, which is going to be something for later as well. And then we have power and a landing gear. So nothing of this I can for the moment use. There's no use for that. So on the PC, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to press control two and I'm going to move to the second bar, my toolbar, so I can add a container to that. So if I now open my tool window, I press G, it's going to show me a whole list of all the uh, buildables I can build right now. You can see there's a lot of stuff here already that I can build, but some of them I cannot build yet. And that is because they are blocked behind, behind progression. So for example, here you can see my turrets, lights, uh, more lights, uh, automatons, all of that is blocked out. I cannot build it. So I need to build the assembler first before this opens up this line and then unlocks all of these buildables. Now, if you do not want to play with progression, you can disable that in the advanced options and that will allow you to build all of these without having to go through all of the progression and unlocking blocks. But that's just a little side note. So if you go to blocks, you can see I do have a container right here, the small cargo container. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to drag it into my toolbar here. And there's a little plus next to it. And as you see on the top right corner, that means I have a several containers in this menu. That means I can cycle between them. So if I now close my toolbar config, you can see this uh, container is now in my hand and also the one on the toolbar. If I press one, I can actually cycle between small grid and large grid. And you can see which grid it is, not only by what I'm having in my hand, but if you look at the little menu on the right side, you can see now I'm large grid, now I'm on small grid. So as this here is a small grid uh, ship, I will have to build a container against that in small grid. So this cargo container is of course too small. I'm going to scroll with my mouse, which is going to now jump over to a different container. Now, this is a large cargo container. I don't want that one. I want a medium cargo container. Hello, future Beeble here. I seem to forget talking about the rotation. If you check your keyboard, you should have a few buttons which are insert, delete, home, and page up and page down. These are the six buttons that will rotate your building item in the uh, tree axis. So I scrolled from large to medium, and now you can see I want to build it, but of course I do not have the materials. It says you need interior plates. You need interior plates to build the medium cargo container. So we're going to go into our inventory here and we're going to produce some of these interior plates. So I'm going to say produce 10 interior plates. And as you can see, this is now using some iron ingots here to craft these interior plates. We do have 230, we should be okay. Now, if I go back to my inventory, I can take these and I can move them into my personal inventory. Now, if I open this again, I press one, I have my container. You can see there's a green line around it. I can snap it against that and build it. All right. So if I now want to weld it, I have to go back to my first toolbar, press one, get my welder. And now I can weld this if I want to. Now, I only have uh, 10 interior plates, so that means if I weld it, it's going to weld it until my interior plates are gone. And now you can see in the um, corner there what I'm still missing. Interior plates, display, motors, computers and construction computers. Now, I could try to remember all that and or write it down and then either craft it or withdraw it out of my inventory. But you can actually use a very handy tool. It's called the build planner. Now, if I open up my tool config again, you will actually see the build planner is right here below it. And for the moment, there is nothing in the build planner yet. Now, if I would press plus, it's actually going to add the block because that was the first thing in my list. So that's not what I want to do. We're going to delete this and we're going to close this and we're going to aim with our welder to the cargo container. And I'm going to press the right mouse button. And you can see now components have been added to build planner. If I now go back to my build planner, you can see that the build planner has added the medium cargo container. All right, so now that I have done that, I can go to my survival kit or, or whatever container that has your resources. If I now press middle mouse button uh, to withdraw, it cannot withdraw because I didn't make anything yet. But if you would have the tools or if we would have the resources, you should be able to withdraw it. Now, I'm going to do shift middle mouse button 
and that is going to add all the resources I need that are in my build planner to the uh, construction. So I'm going to put that in here and now you can see bin put into production. If I go to my inventory or go to production, you can see it's now starting to craft all I need to create this cargo container. Now I'm going to wait until I have everything before I weld this, otherwise I won't have any access anymore to that port. So I'm kind of waiting for the resources to be crafted, then I will build the cargo container and then I will have access on the outside of this cargo container to still access my survival kit. Now in the meantime, if I go in here, let's talk about our uh, hydrogen. You can see I have I already used 10% because I've been jetpacking around. So if I go into here and I put this bottle into my O2 generator, it's going to fill up my bottle again. There we go. Just made it 100% and it used some of my ice to fill that up. So that's why we will have to look for some ice as well, just to keep on filling this up and make sure we have a good resource on oxygen and hydrogen. All right. So now that we have everything, I should be able to middle mouse button. And now I have withdrawn all components. Now I can weld this cargo container up. And there we go. Now I have a container against the survival kit. And now if I go in here, you'll see I still have access to everything. See my survival kit. I can access this. I can slide things between here. This is all working. So now that we've done that, we're going to get our drill out again. And I'm going to keep on mining more of my stone. And then I'll come back to you when I'm done with all the mining. No energy. All right. Now, my battery just went out. And you can see, I do not see where I'm at. <laughs> so we know that the gold was down there. So if I turn around, we might find... To actually go back to the respawn pod. Now, as you can see, this is going to take a little bit of figuring out. Uh, we do have a hole somewhere here. There we go. So, as you can see, my machine is not working, my light is not working, and I have uh, no more energy. Now, in a situation where the planet would be cold, then you would start taking damage, because the suit is actually what is keeping you warm or is cooling you down in a hot temperature. So, uh, to charge our health, we can actually go to the little survival kit here, which is connected here. To the screen, I just press F, and I'm going to recharge both my hydrogen and my energy. It will also... Uh, heal you up if you're damaged it will also recharge your oxygen if you're low there we go so now we've been doing quite some uh, production here as you can see we got almost 1k metal so that's a good start all right so now that we have done all this i think it's started to start focusing on a quick base where we can start focusing on power generation and our assembler and our refinery and that should be the end of this tutorial we're going to start with building a little bit of a foundation so if I take my block, if I press 4 on my uh, PC, that's going to give me my large armor block. And as you can see for the moment, I am on small grid. Now small grid does not allow me to build. Now let me just get some uh, steel plates first. So if I go in here and say production, create, um, let's take 100 steel plates, we will need them anyway. Now you can see it doesn't take my steel plates because it's still doing the ingots and it's going to go in a queue. So if I want to make the plates first, I just move this to the back it's going to focus now on the plates first until it's done and then it's going to go back to the ingots all right let's uh take these over 10 that should be okay to start with all right now you can see it's green now i cannot build this into the ground the small grid is never used as a base it cannot be used as a foundation as you can see so if i now just press it again four it's going to switch over to the large grid. And large grid blocks are allowed to merge into the ground, which makes them foundations. And I'll show you a difference. If I would build a block in the air, you will see it's going to fall down. And it's just going to roll over. And it doesn't have a lot of foundation here. If I would now just add another block on top, let's say I, I make a tower and I want to build something. And the, I add some weight on the left side here and I do some work. You can see it already starts to tilt over. So this is not how you want to build a base. This is a freestanding, uh, not solid grid. So I'm going to remove this. And yes, if you grind things down, it will give you back the resources. So the only thing that you don't get resources for is batteries. You will lose your power cells. All right, so let's get back my cube. I'm going to place the cube in the ground. And now you will see that this cube is nice and solid. It's going to be fixed and I can continue building against it. 
I'm going to build a few cubes. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to make sure I have a little bit of an easy access. So I don't have this. I don't have to jump to get onto it. So I have a nice access point here. And we're going to build another row next to it. That should be enough. Let's get some more plates. So again, I can press the middle mouse button if I want to withdraw the steel plates for this cube. But I'm only going to withdraw one steel plate. Picture check. I just withdrew one steel plate. If I press again, it's going to normally do another one. Say I took two. But it's going to be easier to just go and pick up the steel plates and move them into my inventory. There we go. Now, if I snap this against it, it automatically is going to take over the grid I'm snapping to. There we go. So this is going to be the platform we're going to be working on. If you want, you can weld this up. That's going to make a full and solid one. For the moment, this is just the grid. That means it's damaged very easily, but we should be okay. There's no uh, enemies around. We're not going to get any attacks on this planet. So what I'm going to do now, I want to build myself a power source. Now, I could build a solar panel, which is on 8. Now, the solar panel, as you can see, is pretty large, but we are also night. And uh, this solar panel is not going to do anything. The, the solar panel only works during the day and only works as well if there is sun directed to it. That means if I would have a solar panel flat on the ground and the sun is there, it will hardly do any work. So this solar panel is best used with a turret control that allows it to follow the sun but for the rest i would say solar panels is not the most amazing and efficient way it costs quite a lot of resources and it doesn't generate that much power especially for a beginning playthrough so we're gonna go for the wind turbine which is this one right here now i could build the wind turbine here on this platform and it would generate a little bit of power but it is not very efficient and that is because of the terrain we want to have the uh, wind turbine higher to actually get the most out of it. Most of the time what I like to do is actually build a tower about 10 to 12 cubes up and then put the turbine on top of that because that is going to give you the best efficiency and it also allows you to snap another turbine on the left or the right side just to boost that power and it's a good way to start. So let's uh, go to our cube and we're going to build, let me see, let's build here one Ten, and I'm gonna put two more on top. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna put a turbine on the side here as well. I'm gonna put it on this side so it's not in the way of my platform if I wanna land on anything later. So, and the reason I'm doing this is you need to get, you need to keep a distance between your turbines. Normally, you keep a distance of eight blocks between them if you put them on top of that. But there seems to be a way you can still have them on the side and they don't really seem to influence each other. All right, so now this is done. We can go down and we can start focusing on the wind turbine. I'm going to press 7 again. We're going to go to the uh, container. We're going to middle mouse button. And let me just check. We have nothing on our build planner. I'm going to middle mouse button this so I can withdraw. And I cannot withdraw everything. So now I'm going to press shift middle mouse. And it's going to put everything into production. Uh, I cannot build it as you can see because I still do not have the interior plates. So let's see if I got it now. Yes, we got our interior plates. So let's uh, go up and let's start building the first part of this tower. And then we go and get the rest of the materials. Go to our welder and we weld this up as far as we can. All right, now if I, as you can see here, I'm going to be welding up. I'm almost done here. I'm right below the line that it says a functional hack. Normally these are two different lines. So uh, functional means that as long everything is above that line, this thing will be functional. All the rest above it is actually extra armor. So if it gets damaged, it will get a little bit more. Uh, it has a little bit more sturdiness. So if I weld this, you can see I do not have the interior plates to finish this, but it is already functional. It's already working, it's already generating power, so it's not necessary for me to actually spend more interior plates on this, especially in the beginning, you might want to use it on a second wind turbine or something else. With that done, we're going to start focusing on the first thing we want to build, and that's the assembler. If I open 5, you can see this is the assembler, this is the cube. Uh, there is only one access port on that, that means we will have to put this properly on this build here. Because let's say I built this like that, and I rotate it like this so that the port 
is on this side, then I will not be able to access this assembler because it's going to be behind the block when I'm done welding this. That means we want to make sure that we have access to it. Now we can do it like that. That means that the assembler is now free. I can access the port and I can do some assembling if I want to. Now, if I would have leave it like that, then I would also be able to connect my refinery on that port so I can actually have access to it and the assembler can automatically withdraw resources from it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate this one step more in that direction, like that. So the, the port is going to be on that side and then I build my refiner here. It's going to be able to connect and it's going to be able to actually withdraw resources from each other. So here we want to build the refinery. The refinery has the same, you can see it has two access ports. So I want to make sure that the access port of the refinery is lined up with the access port of the assembler. So I'm going to build the refinery here. And now the refinery is connected to the assembler and once both of them are finished, we should be okay. Alright, with the assembly done, I could actually move my resources over here and actually put the uh, refinery in production because the basic assembler is going way quicker. It works definitely way quicker. But what we want to talk about first is now power. If I go into the basic assembler and we go to control panel, we can now check the wind turbine and you can see this is now working on optimal. I have a 400 kilowatt production of power. Um, that means if I would add another one, we could get to 800, maybe a little bit less. And if we look at the basic assembler and we go to control panel, basic assembler, this is requiring me 280 kilowatts. Now the basic refinery will use 330. So in total, this is going to need to be like 620, 610 power. That means that my wind turbine is definitely not enough to power both of them. All right, so we're going to focus on two things. What I'm going to do, we're going to go to production here. I'm going to cancel all this. Uh, I'm going to take this one away as well. And we're going to withdraw all of this and put it in our inventory. Go to your assembler and let's drop everything into the assembler that is refinable. So the ferrite, uh, the, the iron, the silicon, the nickel, and uh, that should be it. So we have some resources here now. So now... If I now clear my build planner and we put testing in our build planner like that and then I put this into withdraw and then production you can now see that this one is now going to produce this and it's going to go way quicker. We are missing quite a lot of iron for the rest of this refinery. So that means we're going to have to do a lot more mining to get more iron. All right, now that we have everything, let's withdraw it all. The build plan is empty because I cleared it. Let me take it all, take it all here. All successful withdrawn and let's weld this up. Here we go. So now we got our refinery, we got our assembly and they are connected with the ports. If I now go in here, you will see I have access to the basic assembler. So I can actually move my refinery stuff over from here to here if I want to. So that's working. So now I'm going to start dropping my stone into the basic refinery here instead of the one on the survival kit because this one is going to work much quicker. Now the problem is, as I said, we do not have enough power. So the first thing we're going to be doing is actually focusing on making a second wind turbine. Now as you can hear, we do have an issue that the assembler and the refinery are both taking the same power so they are kind of interrupting each other. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my basic assembler. I'm just going to turn it off like that. So my refinery can now fully focus on creating this. And then I'll switch the power so we can create the rest of the resources. Because once that is done, I won't need to focus anymore on dividing the power. Because both of the turbines are going to give me the power I need. And let's see, how much do we have left in production? A little bit. We need, as you can see, we definitely have enough materials. So, refinery is done. Let's go to control panel. Enable our basic assembler again. And now the assembler can now finish the uh, production line. Then we can build our power source. And that should be enough to have them both running. There we go. We have now two turbines. And if I go and check the power. Let's see. 
control power we are making 400 and 400 so that's perfect now this is going to give me 800 power that's going to run both my basic assembler and my refinery and that's going to be it for this tutorial i'm pretty sure i covered most of the important basics which should give you a good start next time we most likely will focus on finding ore deposits so we can expand our base with cargo container and a battery and perhaps we start thinking about transforming our drop pod into a little flyer i hope you enjoyed this guide and it helped you out if you're interested in getting space engineers then why not follow my affiliate link in the description of the video and support me that way thank you so much for watching and i will see you again next time people bum out